Hey everybody, it's Moonhorse again. Um, coming in just before this video with a little bit of information. We're talking about the University of Utah healthcare program. Um, a friend of mine is not doing well and needs you guys, if you can, to look into this program, donate if you can, help out if you can. They're looking for, you know, donations, uh, people who can do live kidney transplants, the whole thing. This is a very good cause, and it's very, very important. So if you guys have anything you can do to help, or any way that you can help at all, uh, please do. It would mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot to everybody. It's not just me. It's about everybody. Everybody's in this together, so we should all put together to actually do something. Like, if you're interested, or you have any way that you can possibly get in touch with this, or if you're in the area and you can do something to help out, you can contact them at youofyoulivingdonor.org. Or you can contact them at the phone number 801-587-8816. Uh, if you're interested in helping my friend specifically when you get through to somebody or you're talking to somebody, ask for Corinne C. Powell. That's who needs the help right now. It's this person who asked me to kind of help out, not just for her, but for everybody. So if you want to help out, you want to contribute to a good cause, you want to do something good, really help these people out they could use it all right so now on with the show hi everybody you came back i'm not sure why i did that voice welcome back though we're going to read some more Neckbeard stories. This is more about Palabeard. Um, I'm not sure if I'm reading these in the right order. Pretty sure I am, though, because they kind of seem to fit together. Again, these are all by Sighing DM. Uh, and also, if you're hearing this... Hey, how's it going? Uh, I don't know why I keep dipping into that voice. <laughs> anyway, this is chapter three in this weird tale. Lady Charlotte. So I'm going to go through the characters, because he's formatting now. So this is a character's list. You're signed DM, the mastermind behind this story. 20 male DM, a.k.a. himself. I previously skipped out of my own description. Brown hair and look pretty decent, I guess. I'm around 5'9", 5'10", about 140 pounds. Is this relevant? I mean, only if you need a mental image of your dear author. Palabeard slash Mini Moon. I described him in the last installment, but for the newcomers, he's about 6'1", 6'4", weighs a lot. Is very pale and has a Grinch-like smile with the breath to match. Lovely. Perfect. Perfect! I'm sorry, I had to do that. Perfect is my girlfriend, named so because she is. She is blonde red hair, slightly shorter than me, and is way out of my league. She's super sweet and really nice to everybody. Bald spot, once more, former best friend, very tall, massive bald spot on his head. That's all you need to know. Ranger, the longtime victim of Palabeard's advances. Described in the last installment, I'll stress again though, she is a lesbian. Lady Charlotte, a personality invented within the mind of Palabeard for his D&D &D campaign. Originally meant as an NPC, she quickly took root in Minnie Moon's mind and has since infected what I estimate to be about 30-40% to 40 of his entire brain. Alright kids, it's story time. Boy oh boy, have any of you ever seen The Butterfly Effect? Pretty okay movie, but the main character keeps trying to fix things and makes them worse. That's how I feel when dealing with Palabeard. See, I kicked him out of the D&D &D group in the hopes that it would send him a message to fuck off with that creepy shit. I'm sorry, be a little more respectful to people's wishes. Instead, it prompted him to declare, Five E is stupid! And thus began his fall from simple cringe into abject madness. He set about making his own tabletop system, and then insisted everyone in the group participate and read through his system as he made it. At first, it didn't seem so bad. Of course, the system had some classes, classed and races horribly overpowered that he would ignore anything said about that. But for a brief moment, I thought, hey, you know what? We might enjoy it. Then he began making NPCs. Now, I myself normally make a few political figure types and other NPCs, either in session or according to players' backstories. Palabeard decided to simply make all the NPCs he wanted for us to interact with right off. Thus, Lady Charlotte, not what he called her, was born. 
In the beginning, he would simply reference her as a quest giver. Then he started speaking in her voice, a shrill, overly joyful, bad impression of a female voice who would lead every conversation with, Oh, hello, darlings! And then would arch his back straight up and wave his right hand about as he spoke as a lady, Charlotte. Fuck. He would then try to flirt with all of us. All of us. As Lady Charlotte. He would spam the group chat with paragraph upon paragraph of dialogue from her and how she's open to all sexual taste, my darlings. Recorded for you as a sample of that conversation at this time. Lady Charlotte. Oh, hello there, darlings. Waving hand around as he lumbers towards our position. Uh, hey, Palabeard. Look, maybe you could lay off on the... Oh, darling, call me Lady Charlotte. I shit you not. These are the words that came out of his fucking mouth. Ranger, dear, why don't you sit next to me so I can get to know you better? He then broke from the facade for a moment to unleash a hideous cackle. His prey squirmed underneath his stare. Ranger, Palabeard, please stop. Please. Seriously. Lady Charlotte resumes. Oh, come, darling. Everyone needs some lovin', and you're so lonely. He sat next to Ranger and set his iron gaze upon her, his hungry mouth agape as he cornered his helpless victim, slimy tongue tracing his teeth. Ew. I knew only one thing that could save her from the advances of this new hybrid creature. Uh, Pala... I'm sorry. Lady Charlotte, why don't we go get a coffee and a cookie? <laughs> I'll, I'll buy... I knew I was endangering myself, but what is a DM without his players? His gaze shifted from Ranger to me, eyes narrowing and a Grinch-like smile on his face. Why, how could I refuse such nice manners, darling? It's actually written like that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> with a look to Ranger, I said, I'm fucked, please pray for me. Uh, I mean, have a nice day, see you at Writer's Club. <laughs> then walked off to buy coffee and cookie for the lumber she-hulk behind me. He maintained the Lady Charlotte impression the whole time as I nervously shuffled back and forth and gave brief, uh-huh, and all right, before running off. Baldspot also got a good deal of attention from Palabeard's alter ego and was now getting hit on with Ranger and I. Enter Perfect. She stormed into my life and surprised me by asking me out after American Lit one day. We hit it off and three dates later we declared each other girlfriend and boyfriend. It's a grand old time. It still is. I'm going to propose to her soon. And I was introducing her to all my friends. I intentionally kept her from Palabeard for as long as possible. But alas, dear leader... Reader? Leader. Dear leader? It was all in vain. As perfect when I sat talking over coffee in the library, a shrill cry came. Send shivers down your spine. Oh, hello, darlings! Yes, he actually introduced himself to my new girlfriend like that. And who is the pretty creature? He swept his back low as he held his hand out to perfect. I shot a stare that could melt through a cement wall and cut in. Palabeard, if you ruin this for me, I'm going to tear your fucking head off and shit down your neck. I mean, could you please just not right now? Just be yourself, maybe? Please? Maybe there is a god after all, because he dropped the Lady Charlotte voice. Oh, alright, you're no fun, though. Yeah, I'm the killjoy. He then went on to insult me, my appearance, my personality, my interests, all in front of Perfect, saying things like, I can't believe you'd want to be with him. He's so bony. You can't be comfortable to snuggle. I'm nice and plump. Perfect then said she was perfectly happy with how I felt when being snuggled. Palabeard went on to insult how I dressed, collared shirts and t-shirt underneath and jeans. Please note he wore t-shirts with holes in them and sweatpants. My personality, yes, it's true, I have problems making emotional attachments to people, and before Perfect, I was genuinely disinterested in dating. This went on for 30 minutes, as he kept making creepy glances at her, and she kept refuting what he said about me before she flat out said, You seem like one of those people who says girls won't date you because you're too nice. You own a fedora by chance? Let me tell you, we'd only been dating for about a week or two, but I got the vague feeling right then and there that I would never find someone more abjectly perfect. I'm normally really nice, but I am. No, stop laughing. I am. But I burst out laughing when she said that, and Palomir simply got red-faced and sneered, I have a door, but it doesn't fit, before walking off. In the end, his campaign failed. He still uses Lady Charlotte from time to time in the Writers Club, but he stopped talking shit about me in front of Perfect, and it's been pretty manageable since. 
Ranger still suffer, suffers from the occasional uh, uh, from him on occasion, and Bald Spot has avoided him. He leaves me alone now, though. Now I know you're all worried that this may mean no more Palabeard stories. Don't. I have plenty more to come. Times at club and outside, though I fear none can touch the mark of Lady Charlotte. I will share more stories so long as you, dearest readers, thirst for more tales of neckbeardery and cringe. Until next time, enjoy. And again, until next time, this is Moonhorse reading neckbeard stories. And I'm also going to give you um, advice. No. No, no advice. I can't give you advice. I'm kind of drunk. Come back again. This will be fun. I love y'all. I'm going to give you a little kiss. Okay, bye.